Historic Lynn is an ongoing series that will take a look at the 24 places in Lynn that are listed in the National Register of Historic Places. To be included in this list means that a location or object has been deemed worthy of preservation. For a property to be eligible for the National Register, it must meet at least one of the four National Register main criteria. Number one, event means that the property must make a contribution to the major pattern of American history. Number two, person is associated with significant people of the American past. Number three, design construction concerns the distinctive characteristics of the building by its architecture and construction, including having great artistic value or being the work of a master. Number four, Information potential is satisfied if the property has yield or may be likely to yield information important to prehistory or history. On today's installment of Historic Lynn, we look at the Grand Army of the Republic Museum, along with the Bank Block and Lynn Masonic Hall. First up is the Lynn Masonic Hall. Located at 68 Market Street, the Lynn Masonic Hall was built in 1880 in the Gothic style of architecture. Once the site of the YMCA, it was bought by the Masons in 1905 and has been there ever since. There are currently businesses and offices located on the first and second floors. The Masons have space on the second and third floor. The entrance is a small doorway on which is the free Mason Square and compass symbol. The Masonic Hall contains various artifacts from their time in Lynn. A giant hall in the space of the old YMCA gym and a portrait of George Washington, something which most American Masonic Halls hang somewhere. We were able to sit down with S. Raymond King from the Masonic Hall about the Masons' history in Lynn and the building they are in. I am S. Raymond King, uh, residing in uh, Saugus. However, I am the secretary of Mount Carmel Lodge here in Lynn. Freemasonry was established in the early 1700s in England and Scotland. They grew out of the crafts uh, of the uh, Masons and uh, uh, other guilds that uh, took place uh, in uh, early uh, England. Uh, the first uh, known uh, Masonic lodge in uh, Massachusetts was in 1733, uh, St. John's Lodge in Boston, which was chartered under the uh, Grand Lodge of uh, England. Uh, from there, there grew uh, certainly a number of other lodges within uh, the, uh, the state of Massachusetts at that time. Uh, masonry is a fellowship, a fraternity in which uh, it is uh, made up of men uh, that uh, look to each other in terms of strengthening their uh, life as far as becoming men of good character and uh, teach uh, brotherly love, charity, uh, and uh, do meet on regular basis in lodges. The Masons have been in Lynn since 1805. The first chartered lodge was in June of 1805, was Mount Carmel Lodge. Uh, a number of other lodges grew from uh, Mount Carmel as the uh, uh, population of Lynn grew, uh, so did the uh, lodges and it became convenient for other sister lodges to uh, uh, come out of uh, Mount Carmel, such as Golden Fleece and William Sutton. Golden Fleece was established in 1865. There was a period, however, in which uh, from 1835 to 1845, which was called the Interregnum. Uh, this was during the anti-Masonic period in uh, the United States, and the lodge returned its warrant to the Grand Lodge of Massachusetts in 1835. It did then uh, request a charter in, again in 1845 and uh, began uh, meeting on a regular basis in 1845. 
the current lodge, uh, Golden Fleece, uh, that was established in 1865, is the one that is meeting here in this building. The other lodges, which was William Sutton, uh, is now uh, merged uh, into uh, Philanthropic Lodge over in uh, Marble Head. Uh, Damascus Lodge, which was uh, here also, uh, is now merged into Mount Carmel. Bethlehem Lodge, which was also here, is now merged into Mount Carmel. And Mount Sinai Lodge, which was also in this building, is merged into Mount Carmel. So the, currently in this building, the two lodges that are meeting are Mount Carmel Lodge and Golden Fleece Lodge. The major symbols of the uh, Masonic fraternity are the square, compass, and the letter G. The square, of course, we know is a, an instrument which is used by operative masons uh, to uh, square uh, their work and so forth. And in masonry, it is emblematic of the uh, being able to uh, uh, square our actions uh, with each other and, and also with, uh, with all uh, uh, individuals that we, uh, that we meet. The compasses are those, uh, again, used by operative masons. They are emblematically considered uh, by masons to uh, be able to uh, stay within uh, certain bounds, to understand what our, our conduct uh, should be. And of course, the letter G is known as in science as well as uh, in the spiritual. Uh, the letter G can stand for geometry, and it also stands for uh, for God. The building was purchased uh, by the Masons from the YMCA, uh, which was on this site in uh, 1905, uh, and has occupied this building ever since. The building uh, was selected for the uh, Register of uh, National Historic Buildings in August of 1979. A building must be of certain age, uh, certainly, and it must be of certain character and construction. The main meeting hall of the building back when the YMCA held it was the gymnasium. Of course, it has been completely refurbished into uh, a meeting hall, which has the uh, necessary uh, incrudiments of, of what it takes as far as to, to hold a meeting. And back about uh, five or ten years ago uh, has been refurbished and uh, we uh, certainly meet there on a regular basis. The, uh, the Mount Sinai room which we are currently in is one of the uh, very uh, particular rooms that holds a great deal of the memorabilia of the lodge which is displayed in various cases uh, around the room. Uh, this was a gift in which when Mount Sinai Lodge was, was merged into Mount Carmel, uh, they requested that this room be uh, refurbished and, and uh, named the Mount Sinai Room. It also holds the library, a fairly extensive library, of all of the various proceedings of the Grand Lodge uh, etc. And uh, it is uh, a room in which it is very comfortable. There is also the banquet hall and kitchen which are also at the back of the uh, of the building and uh, where uh, people are oftentimes uh, uh, the banquets take place, uh, other kinds of meetings uh, and, and so forth. So, so it is fairly extensive. Uh, the second floor of the building is office space, uh, which uh, in times past were uh, totally and fully occupied with optometrists, etc. And of course, as the world uh, became uh, uh, much more modern, uh, the building uh, uh, did not keep up uh, adequately. However, it is now undergoing uh, reconstruction and, and holds offices. So uh, the building is in, uh, in, in use and will continue to be so, uh, we hope, in the, in the very near future. One of the things that I think is most important as far as, as the lodges in the Lynn community is uh, the opportunity that those lodges, both Mount Carmel and Golden Fleece, have extended to the community in many significant ways of charity. 
Uh, Mount Carmel uh, and Golden Fleece are extensively involved in the Masonic Angel Fund, which takes care of uh, children in the Lynn Public School System. When all other systems of social service uh, seem to fail, uh, we are able to contribute significantly to a child's well-being. Uh, we also uh, have contributed uh, significantly in terms of uh, Project COPE, which has been in Lynn for a number of years. We have contributed as well to the Lynn Police Association in their after-school program at Lynn Technical Vocational High School. So we are actively involved uh, in the community and uh, we look forward to continuing that active participation. Uh, and uh, we just recently embarked upon a new program which is called uh, Laptops for Kids which provides uh, uh, laptops refurbished uh, at no cost to uh, a, a public school uh, child. So uh, we look forward to uh, our continued efforts in, in uh, the community. We're going to take a quick break, but stick around because up next is the Lynn Bank Block. Thank you for watching Historic Lynn. Now we move on to the Lynn Bank Block. Located in downtown Lynn, the Bank Block building was constructed in 1891 for $40,000 and was added to the National Register of Historic Places on August 26, 1982. It was designed by Boston architect James T. Kelly to house the First National Bank of Lynn and the Lynn Institution of Saving. Today, the building houses Lynn Arts, WFNX, and other businesses and organizations. This is a classical style building with Palladian windows, carved wreaths, and rusticated limestone masonry. It became a cornerstone of the emerging banking and commercial center of the city that rose from the ashes of the Great Fire of 1889. The exterior of the building still retains a night deposit box in the doorway and a vault alarm easily visible from the street. Within the Lynn Arts Black Box Theater are the remnants of one of the vaults, engineered by Benjamin F. Tripp, the well-known bank vault engineer of Boston. Vaults like this weren't widespread in banks until World War I. The walls of vaults like these were typically an inch thick, with the doors at least three and a half feet thick. We sat down with Lynn Arts Executive Director Susan Halter to discuss the current use of the building. Hi, welcome to Lynn Arts. I'm Susan Halter. I'm the Executive Director here. And you are in our building, which is formerly the old bank building used to house two banks that were constructed after the Great Fire of Lynn, the First National Bank of Lynn and the Lynn Institution for Savings, which a lot of longtime residents still remember well. In 1995, Lynn Arts took up residence in the building, and in 1997 started a major renovation that included the addition of two gallery spaces. A black box theater. studio spaces for artists, and our second and third floors devoted to WFNX radio. The latest from Cold War Kids, Skip the Charades, now Music 1017 WFNX. Good afternoon, it's Adam 12, and I'm hoping it will be a good afternoon because the morning sucked. This is all true. Went out for a walk this morning, a bird pooped on my head. Luckily, was wearing my hoodie and had the hood up. And today, we still, we've added an additional 15 studios, so we've got about 25 artist studios in the building. WFNX is still here and going strong. We've made some major improvements to our black box theater, including professional lighting and seating. 
professional lighting in all our galleries and we added a third gallery for children's art about three years ago. We run a whole variety of programs here from renting the space for parties and events to teaching kids classes during vacation weeks and there's lots of opportunities to get involved, lots of opportunities to do things and see things. We run about six gallery shows a year, um, 12 if you consider taking into account both galleries. So there's a lot going on down here. If you haven't been here, we hope you'll stop in. The galleries are open Monday through Saturday, always free, and it's a wonderful old building. So stop by and visit us. Now we are going to take a short break, but stay tuned because up next is the Grand Army of the Republic Museum. Do you want to purchase this or any other program that Lincam TV produces? It's easy. You can just pick up your phone, call us at 781-596-9641, and tell us the program that you would like to purchase. This last stop on this episode of Historic Lynn is the Grand Army of the Republic Museum. Located at 58 Andrew Street in downtown Lynn, the Grand Army of the Republic Museum was built in 1885 for $37,000 and was added to the National Register of Historical Places on May 7, 1979. It has an impressive collection of memorabilia from the Civil War that includes guns, swords, medals, and various pictures and flags, including the last Confederate flag to fly over Richmond during the war. Their crown jewel is the massive main hall on the third floor, which measures 56 feet by 46 feet. We were able to sit down with representatives of the museum who talked about the history of the building and their impressive collection. Oh, my name is Bob Mathias, and I'm from the Grand Army of the Republic on Andrew Street in Lynn. And this was one of the first veterans posts uh, in the city. It was called the General Lander Post Number 5 uh, of the Grand Army of the Republic. So it was the fifth one in Massachusetts, named in memory of one of the first generals to die in the Civil War. Uh, Frederick Lander was from Salem. He was wounded at Ball's Bluff, and he died of his wounds the first year of the war. And of course, we know the Civil War was 1861 to 1865, um, April to April. And after the war, uh, these veterans came home and they established the, the GAR, Grand Army Republic. And this became one of the largest in the country. Uh, we organized here in 1866, so one year after the war ended. The building was actually built in 1885. It took them 19 years and $30,000 to come up with the funds to buy the land and build a building. Today we have rental space. Uh, the street level, uh, we have uh, two lawyers and insurance office. And we also have rental space here on the second floor. This was the library for the GAR. And uh, here we have uh, many books behind me in the uh, bookcase here. The way we filled this bookcase up was that we have a, uh, a hall down in the basement and uh, we used to have Frank and Bean suppers. And the price of admission was one book. So that's how we filled this bookcase. So we have many books on the Civil War period. Uh, we have the personal memoirs of General Grant, uh, written by Tom Sawyer, as well as 162 volumes of the official records of the Civil War that were published uh, around 1900. We have a note signed by Abraham Lincoln that's in the showcase to my right and uh, it's dated November 7th, 1861. So it's dated during the Civil War. And it, it was, uh, in that note, he asked uh, Secretary of State uh, Stanton to appoint a, um, a gentleman to be a brigadier surgeon of the, uh, of the Army. Uh, the room behind me is what uh, we call the uniform room. And we have various uniforms. We have a, uh, a modern day uniform, uh, Army Dress Corps. Uh, we have a uniform that was worn by Colonel John Brooks, who became the third governor of Massachusetts. And that, this, that uniform is dated 1776. Next to that, we have a uniform from the War of 1812. To the right of that, we have a uniform that belonged to a drummer boy. And those drummer boys were nine, ten years old. Um, imagine that when they enlisted. And they would usually go up with their fathers or their uncles or, you know, whatever. And supposedly they were not, not in harm's way, but you know, in reality they, they were. Next to that we have a uniform worn by uh, Colonel Usher 
uh, who actually became the 11th mayor of Lynn. The next one up from there, we have uh, uh, swords and uh, muskets and so forth. We have an old infield musket, uh, which is 58 caliber, that for the most part was used by both armies, uh, the North and the South. That was actually a modern weapon, even though it was a musket, for the time it was a modern weapon. Prior to the Civil War, they had what they call a captain ball, and they were loaded, they would be smoothbore, the rifles, and they were lo loaded with a ball. Uh, during the Civil War, they grooved the inside of the rifle out, and uh, hence the term rifle, uh, which means that the, uh, uh, the barrel itself, the inside of the barrel is grooved. So when the bullet was fired, it would come out spitting. So instead of bouncing out and you know, missing its target 10 feet away, this was quite accurate to, you know, to a couple of football fields. So 200 yards away, it was very accurate. Above that room, we have what we call the main hall where all these veterans met. And we had almost 2,000 veterans that belonged to this organization. And uh, many from Lynn before and after the war, but some came from other states and they, they moved to Lynn uh, after the war, and uh, for the most part, they work in the shoe industry. And so being an honorable discharge Civil War Union veteran that could join this post, if you have fought for the other side, even though you're American, you cannot uh, join the post. Uh, you, they had the, the post down in the South for the Southern veterans. In that room is uh, 1,243 photographs of the veterans. So not everybody's on the walls, but there's quite a few. In the middle of that floor is what we call a capstan, and that would be from a, a Navy ship. It's actually from the USS Kearsarge that is famous for fighting the, the uh, CSS Alabama, Confederate ship states Alabama, off the coast of Normandy, France, on July 18th of uh, 1864. One of the members of that ship, William B. Poole, P-O-O-L-E, uh, was a Medal of Honor recipient, and he belonged to this post right here. And, we, and the book reads that he received the Medal of, of Honor for driving the ship for the bombs and the rockets. Um, but there are many, many photographs of interest in the walls. And we have d uh, dossiers on, on everybody in the walls there, including some members that belong to the famed 54th Massachusetts, commanded by Colonel Robert Drew Shaw, and uh, made famous uh, uh, right after Gettysburg, actually in July of uh, 1863 uh, at Fort Wagner. And the movie Glory portrays that regiment quite well. And there are two pictures on the walls, uh, uh, John Stackhouse, Company D of the 54th Mass, and Joseph Butler, uh, Company C, I believe, of the 54th Mass. But they're on the walls, and uh, so, you know, th th there's a lot of history there. The room uh, next to that is what we call the ante room, and we have a few things of interest. Uh, we have a couple of tree stumps with shells in them. Uh, some grape shot as well as cannonball and some bullets, 58 caliber uh, infield musket bullets. So, you know, you have these battles, uh, these bullets and shells or whatever that will fly all over the place. And uh, when a bomb explodes, you, you will have the shrapnel. We also have a saddle that belonged to General Frederick W. Lander, as I mentioned earlier, the founder of the, the post was named in his memory, one of the first generals killed in the Civil War. The room next to that is dedicated to the women's post. And in there, we have a few items of interest. Uh, we have a diagram showing uh, one of the battles of Gettysburg, showing the two armies, the North against the South. Uh, and of course, back then, uh, we, we had two different flags in this country, uh, the Stars and Stripes that we have today, and also the Stars and the Bars, the Confederate flag. We had two capitals, uh, Richmond, Virginia, for the South, 90 miles south, actually, of Washington, D.C., today's capital, which was the capital from the North back then. And uh, when you think about it, two presidents. Uh, our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, and uh, for the North, and Jefferson Davis for the South. And that's, in a nutshell, is what we have here. Uh, in the basement where, uh, that I mentioned earlier, where we have the uh, Frank and Bean suppers, or we had the Frank and Bean suppers, is where we have most of the groups that meet down here today. Um, and uh, it's actually dedicated to the World War I veterans. And on the walls, we have 150 photographs of uh, uh, soldiers and sailors from Lynn that did not return. They were killed in action or they, uh, you know, they died during the First World War. And next to that, we have uh, a room dedicated to the Spanish American veterans. And we have many mementos from, from them as well. So you're welcome to come anytime. Uh, please give us a call. Uh, we're in the phone book at the museums, but our number here is 781 477 
7085. And as I mentioned, my name is Bob Mathias. Um, we also have other groups that meet down here, and uh, uh, Dexter Bishop will say a few words about them. Hi, my name is Dexter Bishop, and I'm the president of the Civil War Roundtable of Massachusetts North Shore Chapter. Uh, I'm also a member of the Sons of Union Veterans. I'm the Department of Massachusetts chaplain and also the chaplain for the uh, uh, Lander Camp 5 uh, that meets here at uh, the hall. The various programs that are run here on a monthly basis run from the round table, which meets on the second Friday of the month, September through June, uh, and that's Friday night at 7.30. You're all welcome to come down. No charge, it's free. Just as the hall is free to all organizations that support the effort of uh, putting forth the, uh, the word about the Civil War. The Sons of Union Veterans meet on the third Monday at 7.30, uh, also here at the hall. And uh, between the two of us, we're pretty, two groups, we're pretty busy uh, keeping uh, and working on various parts of the hall to make sure that uh, they are preserved. Uh, one of the things that I would just like to push is the fact that this hall happens to be one of uh, a handful of halls that are in this condition, i.e. in original condition. The main hall is just as the last veteran left it and that gives us a tremendous boost nationwide. Uh, people who have come from around the country have all been uh, amazed at all of the, uh, the memorabilia that can be found here at this hall. Uh, this is the beginning of the 150th anniversary of the Civil War, just uh, back in April, and we would just uh, say to look forward to upcoming events that, that will be taking place both here in Massachusetts and around the country as uh, we bring forth the memory of a, uh, a very terrible war, uh, but it is something that we need to keep in the forefront. And I just thank you for listening and uh, hope to see you at one of our events. Thank you, have a great day. We've only scratched the surface of the list of places in Lynn listed on the National Register of Historic Places. With 21 more locations to visit, we have several more episodes of Historic Lynn left to cover them all. Keep an eye out on www.lyncamtv.com for updates on this ongoing series as well as for airtimes. Also, make sure to visit www.blip.tv forward slash lyncamtv for this and other great programs from Lyncam TV. Available anytime for your viewing pleasure.